For over three years, Juul was getting millions of kids and teens hooked on nicotine. From buying advertising on kid websites like Nickelodeon and Cartoon Network, to using marketing tactics in the exact same fashion as big tobacco companies, Juul was racking in billions of dollars while igniting a public health epidemic. While Juul denies these claims, there are loads upon loads of documents that tell a completely different story. And today, I'm going to be covering every detail, including every single way Juul was getting kids to start vaping, and how they managed to spark a major health crisis among kids and teenagers alike. To understand the full story, we need to take a look at why Juul was invented in the first place, which takes us back over a decade ago to Stanford University in 2005. At the time, two students named James Monsies and Adam Bowen were becoming close friends over their cigarette breaks on campus. Both of them were graduate students in design, and during their chats, they came up with an idea for their final thesis. That idea was a design for an e-cigarette that would give smokers the nicotine they craved, but without the cancer-causing substances that came from burning tobacco. They called the device Plume, and two years later in 2007, they started a company by the same name. During their early investing rounds, James and Adam gave a pitch for Plume that was straightforward and intriguing. An early investor in the company named Ralph Eschenbach recalled Plume's pitch as being pretty simple. They said they wanted to build a cigarette that would be a lot less dangerous to smokers and could be enjoyable. While the idea seemed great, James and Adam would eventually run into a huge roadblock regarding their idea. Ralph made it clear to them that FDA restrictions prevented Plume from claiming its product was safer than cigarettes. This killed their plan to market to current smokers, who were at the time mostly falling into the older demographic. Because of this, they had to scrap their marketing plans and come up with a new angle to take for selling their product. And the demographic they landed on is a perfect example of foreshadowing what was going to happen to them in the future young millennials. More specifically, young millennials who were occasional smokers and might be drawn to a sleek luxury design tech product that they could carry while bar hopping. And that sleek luxury vape design would come to fruition in 2015 when they invented the Juul. The Juul was a game changer in the e-cigarette industry. Not only did it have a cool iPhone-like design, but it had a powerful and smooth nicotine hit that no other vape had at the time. So, with the product ready to go and the demographic in mind, all James and Adam needed to do was brainstorm a way to advertise their new vape to millennials. And what they ended up doing for the next three years would eventually spark one of the biggest health epidemics among kids in recent history. It's hard to fathom the countless amount of shady tactics Juul used to market to millennials. Between using attractive models, bright and fun colors, and making ads in the exact same fashion as cigarette brands, it's hard to find a good place to start. So why not the beginning? It all started in 2015, when Juul hosted hundreds of launch parties for their new product. They would give out thousands of free samples at these parties, and their booths were riddled with young, attractive women working the stands. And while it's not a controversial thing to give out free samples, the future advertising endeavors Juul took on were a completely different story. Juul's first major advertising campaign was one called Vaporized. These ads displayed happy models in their young 20s, dressed in trendy clothes, and playfully posed. And right next to these models, was the Juul device surrounded by bright and fun colors. The color scheme of these ads was questionable and closely related to cigarette ads like this one for American Spirit. On top of that, the poses these models took on were very suggestive and once again similar to other cigarette models in the past. The vaporized ads were distributed through many channels and most notably on animated billboards in Times Square, a move that camel cigarettes also pulled in the 1940s. The worst part of this campaign was that there was very little disclosure that Juul contained nicotine and was meant for smokers. The only mention of nicotine was in tiny, hard-to-read lettering at the bottom of their print ads. And even beyond the Vaporize campaign, there are still loads of examples of Juul using similar themes and messaging as major cigarette brands. Take this example between Juul and Newport showing off a great time with friends, or this one between Juul and Camel both showing off as a great way to relax. Or how about this one between Juul and Lucky showing off romantic couples using their products together. Juul also made sure to touch on holidays, like Mother's Day and Valentine's Day, once again in the same exact fashion as cigarette brands had done before. Another critical point to make about Juul's advertising surrounds their colorful and fruity flavored pods. While it's obvious to say that flavors like mango and creme brulee are enticing to kids, it's also worth noting that Juul made sure to advertise their fruity flavors the most, more specifically over three times more often than their non-fruity flavors. Juul also did many other sketchy things, like promoting big stars with young fans using their product, recruiting young influencers to promote their product, and even filing a patent for a vape device with a gaming mode to play games like 
like Simon says. Even after seeing all of this evidence, you still might be wondering what the problem even is. After all, these ads all contained adults and all were on par with targeting young, hip, and technology-oriented millennials. So what's the issue? And how did Juul get blamed for starting the youth vape epidemic? Well, the problem doesn't just lie in the content they made but rather where they put that content. Most of their reach came from social media, a channel dominated by Gen Z, AKA many people under 21 years old. So most of their ads viewership was young, non-smoking kids and teenagers. And with the bright, colorful and playful ads they were putting out, Jules started to develop a fan base but not the one they were targeting. Between 2015 and 2018, the number of posts about Jewel was skyrocketing, but those posts were clearly coming from middle and high schoolers. Tweets between these years read such as, petition to make our school mascot a Jewel. Horizon High School, where everyone is jeweling in the bathroom. Happy 16th birthday, Lexi T. I hope your day is filled with jeweling and just having the best day ever. There was even evidence arising from Jewel's own employees. In 2016, some salespeople inside Jewel passed around a photo taken by a colleague's teenage son of a picture of a jewel drawn on a bathroom stall at his high school. Jewel employees also started to notice a meteoric rise in website orders using fake IDs. There were also orders coming in for 10 jewel starter kits at a time. Another sign to employees that jewels were being purchased either for resale or to be given to underage kids. With the clear rise in underage appeal, Jewel knew they had a major problem on their hands. To combat the issue, Jewel stopped all of their posts on social media and switched their ads to target a much older demographic. But unfortunately for Jewel, it was already too late. Jewel had essentially became a cultural phenomenon among kids and teens by 2018. On Instagram, hashtag Jewel had over 330,000 posts and hundreds of new posts were being created a day. And according to analysts, out of the thousands of posts, only 5% of them were related to Jewel being an alternative to smoking. While it was clear as day that Jewel was garnering a massive user base of underage kids, they had no incentive to stop them. By 2018, Jewel had grabbed more than 75% of the e-cigarette industry, and sales were topping $1 billion. However, at the same time, over 5 million high school and middle school students were now vaping. More specifically, 1 in 4 high school students and 1 in 10 middle school students were vaping as of November 2019. The spontaneous rise in underage kids vaping had many regulators on edge. But it wasn't until Altria, the makers of Marlboro cigarettes, acquired a 35% stake in Jewel that that the FDA had had enough. The FDA demanded that Juul submit documents about its marketing, research, and sales to youth to better understand the product's virality with teens. But surprisingly, that wasn't the worst of it for Juul. They faced more than 8,000 lawsuits brought by individuals and families of Juul users, school districts, city governments, and Native American tribes. And it would be through these lawsuits that Juul would be exposed for everything they did. To start, Juul had purchased ad space on many youth-focused websites, including those of Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, and Seventeen Magazine. The list ran on and on, including sites such as BasicMathematics.com, CoolMath.com, and SocialStudiesForKids.com. The list also included sites targeted to young girls too, such as DailyDressUpGames.com, GamesToGirls.com, and GirlGames.com. The lawsuits also highlight that Jewel attempted to recruit hundreds of celebrities with large numbers of underage followers, such as Miley Cyrus and Christian Stewart. After being slammed by these lawsuits and the media, Jewel had no other choice than to settle. They ended up paying $1.2 billion to the thousands of families that sued them, and an additional $440 million to 33 states that were investigating them. They also discontinued all US advertising and dropped all of their fruity flavors. Because of these actions, Jewel's market share had fallen from 75% to 28%, making Altria lose more than 95% of their $12.8 billion investment. And while Jewel is still in business, there is no doubt that they're struggling. But more importantly, there's no doubt that they blatantly targeted minors and hooked millions of them on nicotine. 